na pua e of course all of us the flowers e mali mai are hearkened here e ho olo he listen e ho olo he mai listen here e lo ka unity Elo kahi mai unity here. Na mo hala e bloom flourish. E mo hala mai flourish here. E aloha e aloha e aloha e. E aloha mai. Aloha mai, aloha mai, aloha is here. Thank you, Misty. Big round of applause. I like Misty's chant about unity and what will bloom here. And both of those words come together here in this place because it could not happen without the unity and coming together of these three different groups of people. Governor David Ige, the plantation boy, Dwayne Clarisu, the city and county of Honolulu, coming out of our silos and working together to tackle a challenging problem and make a difference in people's lives. And it is a really, really unique partnership. And for me, it gives much hope that we are going to be working closely together and moving forward together, both government and the private sector to solve a problem that has been created by many different sources and will not be solved unless we do all come together. The AIO, AIO Foundation, which is Duane's not-for-profit, is going to be stepping up and helping take care of this land and making, it sh making sure it blooms again. And what we're talking about here and what is so unique is the state of Hawaii, whose land this is, has been given to the city through an executive order under Governor Ige's leadership. And it's happened in record time. And we're gonna be signing, the governor's gonna be signing that executive order this morning. And then the city and county of Honolulu, who is getting the land, is gonna be signing a lease with the AIO Foundation, with Dwayne Corisu, at a dollar a year for 10 years with an option for another 10 years, so that Dwayne can take this land and make sure it blooms again. And when you think about what is going to be happening here, it's pretty incredible. This property here will house approximately 200 families, or approximately 800 people will be living on this special place. We at the city are gonna do our part and spend about four million, up to four million, for infrastructure, something that I'm passionate about. We're gonna be bringing in sewer lines. We're gonna be bringing in water lines so that people can live here and have the type of quality of life we all are used to in our homes on this island. Having said this, I would like to turn it over to Governor Ike to say a few words. I believe the man of the hour, if he would not have taken action, we would not be standing here today with this great story to share with all of you. Thank you so much, Governor. Aloha, thank you all for joining us here this morning. Uh, you know, as I said in my State of the State address this past January, uh, I applauded Dwayne Carisu for really being able to, being willing to step forward uh, from the private sector to really help us address the, the big challenge of homelessness. You know, it is something that has existed uh, for many years, and it really is about the, the city, the state, the federal, and the private sector really working together to pull resources to to be able to uh, work together to find solutions that moves us forward. Um, as uh, I talked with Dwayne and, and talked about what his vision for this site was, uh, we ran into uh, a number of challenges. Uh, and as we've talked through what would be the best, quickest way to move this, po um, this project forward, it really was to execute an executive order to the city uh, to allow them to take control of this property. Uh, and so we will be signing an executive order shortly that transfers um, the land to the city uh, for the purposes of uh, providing housing for our community. 
Uh, I'm excited personally. As Kirk had said, the biggest number of homeless, uh, fastest growing um, group of homeless uh, is the homeless families. And I think that that uh, has been a priority for the mayor. It has been a priority for us at the city, uh, at the state. Uh, we want to uh, place an emphasis on ensuring that homeless families uh, have a permanent place to go to. And this project uh, that Wayne uh, has, has brought together, really looking, as Kirk has said, um, from the providing for the tragedy at Tohoku to be able to uh, provide a permanent home uh, for our people here, I think is a tremendous opportunity. Uh, and I do look forward to the day where hundreds of families uh, will be able to find shelter here uh, in this uh, area. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne Kurisu, someone who was born and raised along the Hamakua Coast in a plantation community, who came to Honolulu as a businessman, a true entrepreneur, and everything he's got involved in has become very successful. And we're all proud to see a local boy, you know, do the very best in a very competitive business world. But he's never forgotten his, his roots and where he's come from. He's one of the most humble people I've met and for someone who's so successful, I've never seen him climb on someone else's back to succeed. He's unique in the business world. And I think what we see happening here today is unique in the private sector world too. So I'm just grateful Dwayne is stepping forward and I hope it's an example of leadership for others in the private sector to follow in his stead. So I'm gonna turn over to Dwayne and I know Dwayne, your son is here too. You may wanna to call him up. I don't know, it's up to you. You're the dad, <laughs> come on up. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Egan. Thank you, Mayor Caldwell. We're all here because we've all played an important part in bringing this project to where it is today. One which promises to begin to end homelessness as we know it and as we define it now in Hawaii. With Kahau Iki Village, we will focus on building community rather than shelter and one which we envision will bring affordable housing alternatives for families who have gone through transition of shelter provided by our social service agencies, and especially for those families from our native Hawaiian community. Let these agreements that we signed today memorialize not only the agreements with the state of Hawaii, the city and county of Honolulu, and the I.O. Foundation. But also let it be how our community has galvanized to help resolve one of the most pressing issues we face today. We believe that government cannot be expected to solve our homeless issues and our affordable housing issues by themselves. Together, we can make Hawaii what we envision Hawaii to be and what we feel Hawaii in our hearts. Thank you very much. Just a few more comments. Uh, one, 13 acres of land, 200 families, 800 individuals. Rent somewhere between four and $500 a month for those who can afford it. Who's gonna manage it? And Dwayne's going to kind of walk us through the village. But there is someone who is a hero to me, and I know a hero to the governor and many in the not-for-profit world, and that's Connie Mitchell of IHS. I wish we could duplicate her. Um, she steps up and says, how can I help? Whether it be at our Sand Island Navigation Center or what she's doing in Waikiki. But if it's okay, Connie, if you could just say a few words. You know, today is really a dream come true for me. Because as a member of the nonprofit human services sector, we really work hard to try to house people. But if there's just not enough housing, it just can't be done. So I really thank you, Governor, Mayor, and Dwayne especially, for just really seeing a vision for what can be. And for me, I'm really wanting it to be a place where working homeless can come and thrive and get out of being homeless and move forward with their lives. So I'm just really, really thankful for the partnerships that have been forged and really honored to be a part of that partnership as well. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks.